We will discuss independent and dependent variables. Recall that a function is when one input of a relation is linked to only one output of the relation. Meaning, a function has only one output for one input. We represent functions by replacing the y with f of x, f of x equal to y, say f is a function of x. So when we write f of x, we are really saying that f is a function of x. Now what do we mean by this? Well, we call f of x or y the dependent variable. And the reason why is because this value y or f of x is dependent on the value of x. x is the independent variable. So whatever variable is inside the parentheses of your function is the independent variable and the entire function would be the dependent variable. So let's look at a few examples. What is the independent and dependent variable? f of x equal to 3 halves x plus 1. Notice that x is the variable in parentheses. Therefore, x is the independent variable. And f of x, the entire function, is the dependent variable. Not too bad, but it doesn't necessarily always have to be f or x. Like in example b, we have h of t. We notice t is the variable in the parentheses, therefore t is the independent variable, and the entire function h of t is the dependent variable. So notice the first two examples, x inside the parentheses, is the independent variable. t in example b is the independent variable. So looking at example c, we can see that r is the independent variable. And the entire function g of r is the dependent variable. And looking at the last one, which is a little interesting because we didn't put the left side in function notation, we left it as y equal to square root of n minus 16. But since on the right side we have the variable n inside the equation with some other operations, this implies that n is the independent variable and n y is the dependent variable. But why would this be important? Well, let's look at a few more examples that give a little more meaning to the idea of the independent dependent variable. In these examples we want to identify the independent and dependent variable but also what each one represents. So in the first example it talks about the cost where x is the number of miles driven and c of x is the cost for driving the car for a day. Well right away notice that x is the variable in parentheses. So x is the independent variable and the entire function c of x is the dependent variable. And the next question asks what does each variable represent? So x may be the independent variable, but there's units attached. x is the number of miles driven, and c of x is the cost of renting a car for a day. All right, so let's look at the others. A rocket is launched at t equals zero seconds. Its height and feet above sea level as a function of time is given by h of t is negative 16 t squared plus 96 t plus 256. So right away, looking at the function, we see that t is the independent variable and h of t is the dependent variable. But what do, does each represent? Well, if t is the independent variable, it represents time in seconds and h of t represents the height above sea level. What about the next one? 
<clears throat> the profit for a certain commodity n, where n is in units, is given by the function p of n equals negative 25n squared plus 425n plus 1500. We can see that n is the independent variable and p of n is the dependent variable. But what does each represent? Well, n is the number of units of the commodity, and p of n is the profit. Looking at the last example, the revenue r of x of producing and selling x awesome hearing aids is modeled by the function r of x equals negative 6x squared plus 67x. So right away we can see that x is the independent variable and r of x is the dependent variable. But what does each represent? Well, x is the number of awesome hearing aids and r of x is the revenue.